As we get started this morning, we're obviously talking about our, we're talking about, really it's a gift series to some degree. It's the Holy Spirit and empowerment, your empowerment. We're talking about the gifts these days. I want you to just, if you would indulge me for a moment, just put your hands out in front of you like you're going to receive a gift from the Lord. The Bible speaks of our open hands as a a place of, you know, there's a sense of of receiving from the Lord, but also just yielding. I'm open-handed. I'm not guarding and I'm not protecting. I'm just open to receiving what he has. If you just pray on the inside with me and agree with me. Father, this morning we have come expectant. We want to receive from you. We posture our hearts and our spirits to receive from you this morning. We posture our minds, our soul, our our mind, will, and emotion. We posture ourselves before you, our entire being. And we're asking right now on the onset of this word for an impartation from your spirit. For some of us, that might be the very breakthrough that we need in our soul. For others, it may be something on the 1 Corinthians 12 list. We position ourselves and we declare you know best but we position ourselves to receive from you this morning and we invite you to come. Would you come? Would you release what's on your heart? In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, last week, as we dove into the actual list of gifts, we talked, or not last week, last week was awesome. We had Pastor Todd. Thank you, Jesus. So grateful for that. Listening to that message online, it was fire. Should go back and listen to it again. There's a lot to digest there. And just good, good words. So grateful we have powerful people in this house. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a word of wisdom. How many of you have been asking Jesus for that gift? So five or six of you are really going to get blessed today. That's good. (laughs) Today we're going to introduce the second one on that list. We're just going to go sequentially right down the list. So if if you have 1 Corinthians open, you're just going right down the list there. It's a word of knowledge. It's one of my favorite gifts, actually. You know, but before we get there, as I was introducing, as I was praying through this topic, I was really struck by one thing. And that's that the majority of the the list, these gifts, they're called spiritual gifts or manifestations of the Holy Spirit, that's what the word uh, testifies of itself in 1 Corinthians 12, that the majority of the list actually are or could be considered ways that God actually speaks to us. And I don't know that I've ever seen it quite in that light, uh, but, it, but it struck me how many on the list actually were ways the Holy Spirit engages with us and communicates to us. And, and with that, it should, I'm sure you've had the controversy, I'm sure you've heard people preach various things, but there's a, a wide audience of folks maybe it's more narrow than I'm saying, out there that actually don't believe that God can speak to you today or that he desires to or will, uh, that he actually takes a narrow path for communicating through the revelation found exclusively in the written scriptures. That God cannot engage with you and, and speak to you in any other way outside of you have to actually open your Bible and then maybe God will speak to you something that's there. But outside of that, you can't expect to have any sort of engagement with God whatsoever. Has anybody ever heard that, that doctrine? Yeah. yeah, people have heard that a little bit. I, I, I was struck by that uh, such that I decided, well, I wonder why these people believe the way that they believe when the Bible seems to say something quite contrary. I, I want to quote from a pastor. I think this is, you'll find this interesting as we just introduce again this topic this morning. This pastor says this, God has spoken and is in fact still speaking to us, but through the scriptures. We don't need any more special revelation. What we need is illumination. And this is exactly what Jesus has promised the Holy Spirit will give to us and is, uh, give to us as his word abides in us. The Holy Spirit of God works through the word of God to counsel and comfort and convict. And then they reference John chapter 16 verses 7 through 15. Now I, I make no challenge on the claims written there. The Holy Spirit does speak through the Word of God. He does bring conviction through the Word of God. You do need to read the Word of God. It's powerful. It's important. Any other alleged revelation that you think you get or conversation that you have with God is measured against the Word of God. You'll never find it to be in contradiction to that. But what we need to understand as they're saying this, that they're talking about this as an exclusive, as the exclusive way that God speaks to His people. 
So when they're saying like, like, like this is exclusively how the Holy Spirit operates with us, this is how the Holy Spirit exclusively speaks to us, you literally have to open up the pages of the Bible. That is the only way you can expect to encounter, to encounter God. I would beg to differ. You know, and, and what I find is fascinating, and I think you'll find this with most bad doctrine. By the way, what we're talking about here is bad doctrine. You know, I think what you'll find is that when you dive into the scriptures they're using for support material, you'll find them lacking. Shall we dive in? So this is the referenced scripture, John chapter 16. We're going to start in verse 17. I'm going to skip a couple in the middle, not because I'm avoiding something, but just because it makes sense with what we're talking about today. It says this, verse 7. But I tell you the truth, that it is to your advantage that I go away. Now, I, here is Jesus. Jesus is saying that it's to our advantage that he goes away. Okay, he's going to ascend to the Father. For if I do not go away, the Helper, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Uh, interestingly, women in the Old Testament were referred to as the Helper, the Helpmate, right? Help meet, right? So herein we find the Holy Spirit is re- referenced in the same way. Uh, if you don't know, Holy Spirit is God. So that means calling women our helpmeet in no way diminishes them and their role. Just a little rabbit trail. Thought it would be helpful. Okay. All right. The helper, if, I, if, if Jesus, uh, let's try again. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Verse 8. And he, when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Well, what I find suspect about this referenced passage as the supporting belief for God only speaks through the Bible is that it doesn't say that at all. (laughs) Note that it does not say that the the Holy Spirit will exclusively uh, bring conviction concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment via the Scriptures. It doesn't say that. Uh, To say that or to say that that's our conclusion from this passage would be to add to the Scripture a presupposition. You understand? It doesn't say that. So for us to come to that conclusion, we would have to add something to it. Are we following along today? Okay. You know what it also doesn't say? And some of you might get mad at me for this one. It doesn't say that it was, it was the best that Jesus would go away because he was going to send to us the canonized Bible. Father, Son, and Holy Bible. We got it, baby. We are. You know, it doesn't actually, it doesn't say that, does it? There's no reference to that at all. It it says it was best that Jesus went to go be with the Father because he was going to send the Holy Spirit. See, now, the Holy Spirit, in this context, what you have to understand is that, like, Jesus was in his human form, which meant that, like, you would have had to actually go wherever he was to have a convo with him. You understand? Like, like in Philippians, it talks about how he emptied himself of much of his divinity, right? Well, this is one of the, the ways he emptied himself. He was not omnipresent. He was physically present. So I would have had to go to him to have any sort of conversation, would have, to get a download from his teaching and hope that I can get past the crowds to get a handshake or touch the hem of his garment or something, right? It was best that he went away because he was going to send the Holy Spirit who would not only seal us in our, faith, but he, in our faith, but he would baptize us. He would rest upon us for God's purposes. But that is immensely personal. That's what I want you to see as we look at this. It's like when we're talking about it was best that Jesus go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to every one of you believers. This is a personal thing that's happening. I have the Holy Spirit individually. And if you have, been, if you have given your life to Christ, you do too. It's an individual thing. I have communion with him. He's closer than the air that I breathe. He inhabits my spirit. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. Every day when I'm sleeping or when I'm awake or taking a nap or even when I'm making stupid decisions, he's with me. It's personal. He's with me all of the time. I have access to the Holy Spirit all of the time. I don't have to go to Jerusalem to find him. He's with me all the time. It's personal. In other words, he's with me at every moment of every part of my waking and my sleeping day. Thus, I don't have to go to the Bible to find him. I can just have a conversation. (laughs) I can come boldly into his presence. 
because of the blood of Jesus, right? This passage, which they're using as the, as the proof text for this doctrine that God only ex, you know, speaks uh, exclusively through the Bible, it says nothing about him ex, you know, speaking exclusively through the Bible. In fact, what it says seems to be the opposite. You have the onboard Holy Spirit who will commune with you personally every day, all day. I love this. And we skip to verse 13. Listen to this. But when he... The spirit of truth comes. Again, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Can God speak to you? Says so here. And and he will disclose to you what is to come. Now, that's interesting. He will disclose to you what is to come. So you're saying it hasn't happened yet? You're going to disclose to me things that haven't happened yet? That's revelatory. So the Holy Spirit can tell me stuff that's going on in the future? Says so right here. And we're not just talking about the book of Revelation. Well, yeah, we just flip to the end. We know the end of the story. No, we're talking about a personal Holy Spirit who's communing with you. He's, he's committed to talking to you about your future, the things that will come. You know, there's nothing in here that would lead us to believe that God would speak only, only through the Bible, exclusively in that way. I think it's rather... The opposite. And so with that preface, is it possible then, and obviously I've given you the answer, is it possible then that some of the ways the Holy Spirit speaks to us then can be found on this gift list in 1 Corinthians 12? And we've already given you the answer. The answer is, you guys are so good at participating. So good. I had to retrain the church I was at last week. Yeah, they didn't know how to, they didn't know how to participate. We got them, we got them straightened out by the end. Now their pastor's going to not like it. And they're going to have to, it's going to have to fix everything I messed up. I like the participation. Shall we just take a quick review? And I know that we haven't gotten through all these, but I also know that most of you are familiar with them. You know, the first one on the list, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago, is, is a word of wisdom. Again, we're, we're just relating these gifts back to, like, is this maybe the, some of the way that God speaks to us, right? Well, what is a word of wisdom? Well, if, if I were to approach you and you're like, man, I'm, I'm really perplexed. I, I don't know how to, I don't know which way to go. And then I say to you, oh, I've experienced that before. Uh, you should actually take a left right here. You know, and you execute and you find, oh, that was exactly what I needed to do. Thank you for that word of wisdom in that moment. Now, I'm not talking about a supernatural gift. I'm just talking about two friends having a conversation and wisdom that's released, right? But I hope it wasn't lost on you that two friends are having a conversation and wisdom's being released. (laughs) And so we're talking about a word of wisdom here, this gift, this manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Would it not, like if I'm getting a download of wisdom, would it not be the Holy Spirit speaking to me? Of course it would. Of course it would. And, and not unlike it, we're going to talk about this in greater depth today, the, a word of knowledge. Similarly, if I have a divine deposit, a supernatural deposit of knowledge that I wouldn't have had any other way, that's basically the definition of the gift. Like, wouldn't that be God speaking to me? Like, I, like, I don't know. Uh, I hear of something in Bud's past. I don't know what it is. <laughs> you were a salesman in 1995. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm just making stuff up, obviously, and you can see that from his furrowed eyebrows. So, you know, it's like, I would have no way of knowing that. So if I'm, if I'm receiving that download from heaven, and he's like, yeah, yeah, that's right. I was a, you know, I was a salesman in 1995, right? Like, how many of you know, like, God's now speaking to me? <laughs> Are we live? We good? <laughs> I had to retrain you too. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, this is, maybe this is obvious and elementary, but I hope it awakes some, awakens something in you. The next one we have is, is faith. And, and, and allow me maybe a little allowance, or maybe I'm stretching on this one, uh, but I don't think so. Like, how many of you know God's not human? Man, our biggest, our biggest flaw is that we believe that God's going to speak to us like he's a human being. But God actually is multifaceted in the way that he speaks. And so I think we're talking about some of the multifaceted ways that God speaks even here. And so I want to submit to you that faith is one of those ways. Like, like in any given moment, if faith arises on me, if I have this deposit of supernatural faith where it's like, when I came into the room before, I wasn't really, I was feeling pretty weak. But in this moment right now, I've been called to pray and something rose up on the inside of me. And I believe the God of heaven will answer me when I pray, right? 
right? Like this is that gift of faith, the impartation of faith for whatever God wants to accomplish in this moment. Like wouldn't that kind of be like God is saying, like, well done, this is the direction that I'm sending you. Like, like wouldn't he be kind of endorsing the mission of the moment when the deposit of faith is given to me? Right? Like, wouldn't this be like, yes, this is my will. This is my way. Walk in it. And I'm with you, son. Right? So it's like, even in faith, I find, wow, I think Holy Spirit's actually talking to us. And an example of this from Scripture, I I believe Pastor Todd even actually briefly touched on this last week. You have the man that was lame from birth from Lystra. Didn't you touch on that last week? I thought you did. You know, and, and the Apostle Paul is, it expressly says, by the way, sharing the gospel. What I love about that is he must have been sharing something different than what a lot of people share today because then it goes on to say, and he looked on this man and he saw that the man had faith to be made well. What was the Apostle Paul preaching? What kind of gospel was he preaching that this old guy thought he could get healed from a lifelong illness? You should question the gospel that you've been taught. Just another rabbit trail on a side note. You know, but the, the point for today is that he saw faith on this man. And the Apostle Paul says, I, I, I see this faith. And now I'm seeing what the Father in heaven is doing in this moment. So I know the God who wants to heal everybody specifically right now is releasing something. He has shown up onto the scene. This guy, the faith has risen up into the sky. I'm seeing this as something, the work, a work of the Father. The Father's hand is moving right now. And I know that God wants to heal him in this moment moment and that that's going to happen, right? So it's like this, this faith thing that you, mm, I'm seeing something here. Like, okay, this is an endorsement of God's will. He's about to move, right? See, God is speaking to us even through something like a gift of faith. You know, I, I could kind of spin it in the same way for gifts of healing, for effecting of miracles. Those are the next two on the list. You know, the truth is if you see those things happening, you know that God is encouraging you. As I see what the Father in heaven is doing, uh, he's looking for partners. He's looking for someone on whom to show himself strong. Like, will that be you? Will you discern what he's doing in the atmosphere? But we'll skip past that. We'll, we'll give you those, right? But the, the, the next one is prophecy. Well, by nature, prophecy is... <laughs> God speaking to you? God is speaking to you usually for someone else's benefit. Right? So by the very definition of it, we have to concede. Well, I think God's speaking. If that thing still exists, it, he's still speaking. Distinguishing of spirits. You know, you're able to discern both human spirits, demonic spirits, and angelic spirits. The Bible says that it's the mature who through practice, we'll talk about that maybe momentarily, it's the mature who through practice have sharpened their senses to discern both good and evil, right? So you've got a discerning of spirits gift that's here. Uh, if, the, if the gifts are a manifestation of Holy Spirit, and I would say the manifestation of Holy Spirit is the obvious confirmation that he's present and he's working, Okay, just to, again, continue to try to demystify some of this language. Like, if these gifts are the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, if I've discerned something in the spiritual atmosphere, wouldn't it be kind of like Holy Spirit's giving me some insight into the realm he lives in? Wouldn't you kind of classify that as he's speaking to you? (laughs) All right. We have various kinds of tongues. Eventually we'll talk about that. But we have interpretation of tongues. Listen, the moment that one interprets a tongue, the gift of tongues is transformed into the gift of prophecy. What did we say prophecy was? God speaking to his people. Right, so if I have a tongue and that tongue is in, is is interpreted, like now I understand what was said. It's now a prophetic word. It's now something that I can take and I can sink my faith into. Are you with me? So, isn't it striking how many of these on this list in First Corinthians twelve actually are Holy Spirit communicating with us? <laughs> you know, to come to the conclusion. That God is only speaking through the Bible exclusively. Yes, he speaks through the Bible. Yes, open it up. Yes, learn it. Memorize it. Study it. Go deep in it. I'm not challenging that at all. But to suggest again that the only way that God speaks is when you actually open up the pages. There's no other way you can encounter him. How many of you know you have to throw out a lot of scripture to come to that conclusion? You have, to throw out a lot of, you have to throw out a lot of scripture, not the least of which is 1 Corinthians 12. Really 12, 13, and 14. How many of you know the love passage was actually in the midst of the gifts? 
right? You got to throw it all out. Throw it all out. That was for some people like 2,000 years ago. It doesn't apply to you. Do whatever you want. <laughs> and I just don't see the Bible being written exclusively to a, a people from another land 2,000 years ago with no further application for today. Do you? We're in trouble if we believe that. We're in trouble if we believe. To come to this, like lock, stock, and barrel, to this doctrine, one would have to throw out an awful lot of Scripture. And how many of you know, to the contrary, God actually calls us to earnestly pursue the gifts on these lists? Yeah? Which obviously brings us to our, maybe it's not so obvious to you, but it brings us to the first gift on our list. We've already talked about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 8. You have the first one mentioned, which we've already talked about. For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another a word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. Holy Spirit is manifesting himself and out of his goodness releasing gifts accordingly. So I was in Excelsior Springs last week, and uh, I have a, a, a friend's church down there. They invited me to come and share my heart. It was a wonderful, honoring opportunity. I was so grateful to be able to do it, and grateful we had Pastor Todd here, you know, in this house to be able to leave a deposit. You know, while I was there, you know, if you've been around the Kansas City area for any time at all, particularly the charismatic world, you'll, you'll come to find out that it's a rather small world. <laughs> You know, it's like, wait, no, I know that guy. Oh, I've heard of that. Oh, I was there. You know, like, all, it's just, it's a pretty small world. And, and such was the case here. A guy had approached me and he said, man, do you know this guy, Kevin Nolker? <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and some of the folks who've been here for a while laugh because they know Kevin Nolker is one of our founding members. He's been here for like 50 years, right? In fact, he's sitting right over there. He, he wave and smile. We'll, we'll have the, the, the queen's carriage, king's carriage come by so he could, he could do his thing a little bit later, you know. But just to give honor where honor is due. These guys have been here serving the Lord for a long, long time. And this guy starts telling me this story. He says, yeah, you know Kevin Nolker? I'm like, yeah. He goes, yeah, he's, he, like, he used to be really prophetic. I'm like, he didn't used to be. He still is, bro. Like, like, <laughs> he still is. He was like, man, there was this one time we were out at this conference. And he's like, we were here just talking. And he said, next thing you know, Kevin goes, God just spoke to me. Somebody over there has, uh, is going to commit suicide. You know, and he was like, the next thing you know, he's like, Kevin's like, let's go. And so he said, there were thousands of people there just everywhere. And Kevin just walks right up to this guy. Hey, <laughs> hey, you. And, just, and the guy melts into tears. So the story went. Kevin's got a little different, a little different version. His, his is not quite as good, but <laughs> just uh, no, it, it was funny, actually, because the, the one telling me the story was honoring Kevin. I, I told Kevin this morning, I said, by the way, I'm going to use you this morning. And, and he tells me the story and fills in some of the gaps and the details, but honoring the other guy. So they're both honoring one another, you know. You know? So he goes to this guy, you know, they, they engage in this conversation, asking him, like, hey, we have this sense from God that you're, distru- you're struggling with depression and you're, you're considering suicide. He said the guy just melts into a puddle of tears because they nailed it, that that was exactly what was going on. You know, like, how does a guy in the middle of a thousand people, in the middle of a conversation, 10,000, I should have just brought him up to tell the story. He's like, you got it all wrong, man. The point is there was a word of knowledge, people. You know, so, so you got 10,000 people there and, and, and he's having a conversation, he's distracted, right? Like he's just having, a, just being normal and just boom, he gets this download. Whoa, there's somebody over there. Over, there's 10,000 people there, Kevin. What do you mean there's some? Yeah, there's a lot of people over there. Reminds me of Jesus in the moment when the woman grabs the hem of his garment. Somebody touched me. The disciples are like, yes, somebody, bro. There are like 10,000 people around here. We, everybody touched you. Like this is that moment and he beelines right to this person, you know, and, and they're able to minister to him. And, and I, I, I assume the rest of the story is save his life. You know, uh, it, that's the way it goes. Sometimes you don't know, but we trust the Lord that that's obviously what he was up to and obviously the fruit of that encounter. You know, how many of you know, it's pretty tough to explain that if you believe that the Lord can only speak to you through the Bible when you open the book, you know? Uh, that's, that's nice, but how do you explain what happened there? Well, it was a good guess. It was, a, it, I don't know what the odds are. Like, where's my, where's, where's Rebecca, my mathematician? You know what I mean? Do the odds on that. 10,000 people out of all of them, he beelines to the one guy with special revelation that was only suited for him, right? Like, what are the odds of that happening unless these gifts, in this case, the gift of a word of knowledge, is still very much in operation today? Now, I tell you what, I want to operate like Kevin Olger. I mean, 
right? Amen. You know what I mean? I want, to, I want Holy Spirit to interrupt me when I'm out and about. I'm like, oh man, I'm tired. We had church today. I just want to eat my Mexican because that's what we do on Sundays, right? You know what I mean? So I just want to eat my, and then all of a sudden I get a download from heaven. And, and how many of you know, like when you get a download from heaven, when God is revealing himself to you in this way, he's looking for partners, it's not just like, oh, be warm and filled. God bless you. I hope that it all works out for you. you know? No, he's looking for partners. So the next responsibility that you and I have is actually, like it's not only to discern what he's doing. So again, the, the, the mature through practice, we discern what God's doing, just to put it in a paraphrase. You know, so we're not only called to discern what he's doing, we're, we're, we're called to discern what we're supposed to do with the information he's giving. Make no mistake about it. He's looking for partners. I mean, God could just show up and do whatever he wants to do with anybody. How many of you know he's actually chosen to limit himself to you and me? Now, I wouldn't have done it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't trust me that much. I'm not that good. You know what I mean? Like, get the Q-tips and clean out my spiritual ears somehow. I, whoa, any given day, I'm like, Lord, am I supposed to tie my shoes? I can't hear you. I don't know. Like, I, like I, I'm, a, I'm a mess most days, but the Lord has chosen to use me. He's chosen to use you. Hey, good news today. He's big enough to cover up any gap that you bring to the table. <laughs> He's big enough to close the gap. It doesn't matter how strong I am or how weak I am. The gap is the same. God is infinitely amazing and better and more capable and powerful than what we are. So don't disqualify yourself. Just present yourself as a partner. Learn to practice, learn to discern what he's doing in any given environment. Because he's looking for people just like you and me. Broken people, people who are confused, people who are doubting, people who aren't sharpened up, people who are like, was that God or not? Is that pizza? Like, what is that? That was weird. Like, he's looking for people just like you to be able to do what we just described with, with Kevin Nolker over there. Amen? Amen? We have a ton of examples in Scripture. I want to hit just a few of those. I'd ask you if that's all right, but you don't get a choice. <laughs> I, it actually starts all the way back in Genesis with, with Adam and Eve. And, and I love this. You know, Adam actually, Adam goes under the Holy Spirit knife, you know, and, 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 and the Lord like pulls parts out of him to fashion this woman who will forever be a thorn in his side. No, that's not true. No, that's kind of true, actually, now that I think about it. That was a joke, but that was 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and, and he, he, doesn't, he doesn't really fully understand what's going on, but he comes up out of the anesthesia of the Spirit. And, and he says this. This is Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. He says, now this is bone of my bones. He's talking about what happened. He's talking about this woman who is now standing before him. And flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man shall, shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now, listen, like, there was no one else on the planet. What are you talking about? Where did you, where did you get this from? You're cra you crazy lunatic. You're like, how did he know that she was pulled out of him? This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, that this woman who was standing in front of him was actually a part of him. That in a sense, she completed what he lacked, right? Like, like how did he know? How did he know that there would be a human father and mother who would give birth to children and, and multiply and create generations? Like, how did he know that? How did he know, you know that, that we were to leave and cleave, that, that we would be born to human parents and that at some point when we reached a certain a certain age, a certain point of maturity, we would actually marry another woman like this and, and live happily ever after. Like, how did he know that this was the design of God? Like, there were only two of them. He didn't have parents. God was his parent. That was it. This is the start of the chain. How would he know unless it was supernaturally imparted to him by the Spirit of God? See, here's a word of knowledge all the way back in the very, very beginning. A word of knowledge in this case that then erupted. What's he supposed to do with this word of knowledge? It erupts then in a prophetic declaration. I'm going to prophesy now something that will have and bear fruit forever until Jesus comes back. Actually, well, depending, okay, all right. I was going to say depending on your eschatological view, maybe even longer than that. I can see nobody is a study student of eschatology, so we're going to move on. <laughs> there's another one, uh, several, of course, in the, New, in the New Testament. Do you remember the prophet Ananias? 
This is another one of my favorites. You know, it's, uh, it's interesting that you find prophets in the New Testament because at this point, you know, 10 years into the planting of the church, the foundation had already been laid on the apostles and prophets. So what use would a prophet still have? Sorry, just a rabbit trail on a thought. Acts chapter 9, verse 11. If you didn't know, people say apostles and prophets don't have a function today. I would disagree. I see nothing in Scripture that would suggest that those functions uh, have dissolved. Acts chapter 9, verse 11. Listen to this. Listen to the specificity of which he operates here in his relationship with the Lord. And the Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming. So there's a word of knowledge even for Paul. I didn't catch that the first time around. A man named Ananias who would come and and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. Listen to all the stuff that's happening here. He he knew that there was a guy named Judas who lived on a specific street. Like, I'm already good. I'm like, just tell me. Like, I'll go knock on their door. I don't even know what. What do you want me to do with that? Like, that's already cool to me. I'm like, like, bro got a download of the guy's address. Like, you're going to meet a guy. He's at 332, you know, straight lane. Okay, all right. And, and then the guy was actually there. How many of you know, right? Like, this is a word of knowledge. You know, that he was going to be housing this guy named Saul. That, that this guy named Saul, that he knew exactly what he was doing in that precise moment. Think about that. You, you're going you're gonna to inquire. There's a guy named Saul who's staying with a guy named whatever it was. Whatever his name is. What is it? That's the dude's name? That guy. It's that guy. A man from Tarsus, Judas. You guys had it right. It's the house of Judas. Yeah, a man named Tarsus. Okay, so he knew where Paul was from. He knew that he would be there. He knew at that precise moment he would be praying. Are you catching this? Like, this is crazy stuff. He got a, yeah. He knew that he had gotten a vision. And he knew the content of that vision. Now, bless Kevin's heart, but this is an upgrade. (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, listen, you got, look, look, here's the address. You know, here's the guy that owns the house. Here's what they're doing in that house. By the way, he's got a buddy staying over. So, you know, uh, this is what's happened to that guy. Here's the vision that that guy got. Here, you know, here, he got a vision. And here's the content of that vision. And here's what you're supposed to do with it. He's waiting on you because I also released this knowledge to him. You know, that you specifically were going to be coming to minister to him to bring him to the next place. Whew. Now, I want to operate like that. Yeah. Right, like, uh, this is probably the reason I wouldn't. Literally, in my mind, I'm like, I quit my job, just walk around the street. All right, Lord. 328 Straight Street, here we come. <laughs> like, like that. Okay, so maybe I'm not going to ever operate like that because I probably need my job and the Lord probably needs somebody to pass to this church. So, so here we are. But how many of you would love to operate with that level of download from the Holy Spirit? Like, man, this guy is getting high-level revelation here. Just this direct, very, very specific download. Now, here's the thing. Is is God a respecter of persons? No, he's not. And, And we're all called to earnestly desire the gifts. This is the gift of the word of knowledge on display. So what God is saying is that's attainable for all of us. This is a possibility for everybody in this room. If we just earnestly desire, if we partner with the Holy Spirit, if we approach with humility, if we awaken love in our hearts for others, who we would be able to, you know, you understand that Ananias is receiving this download from the Lord. There was, he was expected then to do something with it. So he actually had to be, he had to step out of his own routine. He had to, he was being disrupted by the Holy Spirit in this moment. You know, he could have just as well been like, man, I had to go to the market today. Like, I've got, I got, I got a soccer practice I'm supposed to be at. I've got this, I've got that. How many of you know, he let the Holy Spirit completely interrupt him. And there was an expectation that in that interruption, he was going to do something with this knowledge that he had just received. What was the something? He's disrupting his entire walk, his entire life to be able to go and execute the orders of the Holy Spirit in this moment. See, God's looking for partners. He's looking for people who will do something with the divine revelation that he's releasing to you, with the word of knowledge in this case that he's releasing to you. Does this make sense? There's a couple of ways... That I've seen this gift, I would say, softly in operation. You know, 
And one of the ways that I've seen it in operation in the modern day church, and, and obviously this is, just, this is just a couple of examples, but you know, I, I have often seen where somebody will get a word of knowledge like this. You know, like in this case, guys getting the actual address for somebody, right? You know, it's like we, if I was standing here and I was like, does somebody live? Of course, you wouldn't believe me because I've got a church database, but let's just suppose for a second. Does somebody live at 328 Straight Street? You know, they're like, yeah, that's me. And, and you had a white dog named Fluffy when you were five years old. Yeah, that's me. Right? So what's happening in that moment, there's, there's revelation being released from heaven that's very, very specific that I would submit to you is meant to soften the heart of the hearer. So in that moment, the one who's receiving that divine revelation or who's experiencing in that, like in that moment, they're going, man, like there's no way anybody knows that information. Nobody but God. So God sees me. And not only does God see me, you know, God's, uh, God's about to speak to me. See, it's preparing the way for them and it's igniting, I believe he's igniting faith on the inside of them for what is to come. And it's the primer oftentimes then for the prophetic word that comes. There's the guy at 328 straight through, you had a dog when you were fluffed. Like, like none of that matters except to ignite faith in the hearer for the next part of it. And God has a calling on your life. And, and I heard him say this about you. You know what I'm saying? It's the next part that all of a sudden I'm willing to receive. When a little bit before I was skeptical, I'm like, I don't even know what this is, this crazy stuff, this is weird. But when he calls me out, and it's a specific knowledge that nobody else could know, you're like, this has got to be God. And it's softening our hearts for the next thing that he wants to deposit in us, right? Another way that I see it commonly in the church today is, is through a word of knowledge that results in a healing. You know, so uh, sometimes you'll have somebody who will just be like, man, I just feel like, and there's so many ways that God speaks. Maybe you just know in your spirit. Like in my spirit, I just had this, this in my knower, sometimes people will say, like there's somebody here with an ear trouble in their right ear. Is there anybody here with an ear trouble in your right ear? And there's, okay. <laughs> oh, hey, there's five people who raise their hand. See, the Lord's revealing that because he wants to, pe- he wants to heal people. Amen. And so the same thing is happening. There's a primer that's there where the Lord's de- decided for whatever reason in his own sovereignty to target something specifically. By the way, I'm of the mind where if he's targeting ears, like, it doesn't matter whether it's left or right. It doesn't matter whether it's left or right knee. Like if he's healing in the room, let's go for it. Right? <laughs> like, let's start with the ears. We're going to be obedient to that. And let's go to whatever else he's talking about if we've got time to do it. You know? but, it but in the same way, there's a word of knowledge that primes the prompt, that softens the heart. It pinpoints the issue. It ignites faith in the one who he's now wanting to minister to. So this is one of the ways that I've seen the gift of the word of knowledge. I, I love this stuff. I was, uh, I was walking down a prayer line one time and uh, I, was, I was, it was one of those, it was a small enough venue where I could just lay hands and pray for, for every single one. And so I was given a word to every single one as the Lord would give me utterance. And I told this guy, I said, I said, man, you're, you're about to get promoted in your job. You're about to have increase, you know, something like that. He calls me the next day. He goes, man, I didn't believe a word you said. He goes, you wouldn't believe. I made it to the office the next day and my boss called me in and immediately handed me a promotion. I got a raise and an increase. And I was like, come on, Jesus, get him, you know. Like, I, that's this, I just think that's cool. <laughs> I just think, you know, well, what was God trying to do in that moment? Love on his kids? You know, sometimes it's just as simple as that. God loves you enough just to speak to you like that, to send somebody into your life and to speak to you, you know, in a moment when you needed it, you know. I don't know what was going on in that man's life. I just know that Father saw him, you know, and, and, and wanted to just impress on him, you know, that he was seen by God, that he was loved by God. I tell you, I, I'd take that every day, you know what I mean? You know, these gifts are just beautiful. I, I love the outflowing uh, of these things. There's another one Ananias brings up, of course, my remembrance of Acts chapter 5. Got another example here. Acts chapter 5, starting in verse 1, it says, But a man named Ananias, a different Ananias, by the way, and his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property, and they kept back some of the price for, for themselves. With his wife. He kept it back for himself with his wife's full knowledge, and bringing a portion of it, he laid it down at the apostles' feet. But Peter said to him, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? See, he thought he was lying to man. That's something we can meditate on for a minute. Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land? Now, this is some scary stuff happening right here. And I can't even p- pretend to explain it or break it down to you. I just know there's some crazy stuff that happens in the Bible. This is one of those examples. But for today's purposes, you know, you, we need to see it for what it is. You know, 
that the apostle is, is standing there. They're having the interaction. People are bringing money into the church so that the church can be planted and can advance, right? There's this spirit of generosity on everybody. And these guys come and they present their offering and he immediately knows that something is amok. He immediately gets a download of knowledge from the Holy Spirit that these people are filthy liars and they're trying to, do, they're trying to make themselves look good in front of the new church, right? How did he come by that knowledge? Listen, guys, like he, he, he didn't, it wasn't like he was like, hang on just a second. And then, and then he gets all of his buddies around. And he's like, anybody know, anybody know this guy? You know this guy named Bud? Anybody know that guy? Oh, yeah, we know. He just sold the property. I was at Justin. I, Justin's a realtor. Like Justin's like, yeah, I just, I just helped him sell that piece of property over there. Hey, how much did they sell? $100,000. $100, That's funny because here they're saying that they only sold it for fifty, right? Like, you understand, he didn't actually go and, and quarry with his natural mind, you know, looking for eh, what's going on. He didn't even have like a sense of something was off and then use his natural mind. He had a deposit of knowledge into his spirit that he could not have come by any other way. This is the word of knowledge. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Are we doing good? I want to suggest this to you. We've talked about it. I've touched on it a couple of times. You know, uh, how many of you know the gifts take practice? Everything takes practice. And, and this is a big misnomer in the body of Christ. We think, well, if it's God, then it's going to come out of heaven gift-wrapped and with perfection. And this is, this is our, one of our uh, fatal fa- fa- failures with the gift of tongues. When the Holy Spirit possesses me and overtakes me, you know, and forces me to do this thing, which I really don't want to do because it's awkward and weird and I want people to think I'm weird, and, like, then I'll, you know, then I'll know. How many of you know the Holy Spirit doesn't operate like that? Yeah. Very often. He did kick Paul off his horse, but... <laughs> You know, like it, it, takes, it takes practice like any other gift would take practice. You know, you don't have a, a major league baseball player, you know, who's out there batting a thousand. Isn't that the best? I don't even know. Thank you for you sports fans. That was wonderful. Appreciate the assist. But you don't have them just coming out of the womb, batting a thousand. They're like, listen, bro is a prodigy. He's got some, like, no, like they have to practice even though they have an athletic gift. Is that right? The gifts of the spirit are the same way. Now, if one has to practice the gifts, then that means you can get it wrong. Is that right? It means you can get it wrong. And that's why in this environment, we don't promote a thus saith the Lord prophetic approach. You know, we, we promote something that looks a little softer. It looks a little bit like, like I'm a fallible human being and I, per scripture, see in the mirror dimly. I, I don't hear everything. I don't ever get the whole story. I get just a little bit of it. You know what I mean? And I, I know that what I do get is getting filtered through me just a little bit. And I can, I, being a fallible human being, I can get it wrong because I'm practicing. I'm, I'm learning to hear that God. Like, has anybody ever missed the voice of God? You're like, God's speaking to me this. And you missed it entirely? Yeah, 100%. All, like, a lot. <laughs> all of us, right? Because we're all practicing. So then why, in the midst of that knowledge, would we come, Thus saith the Lord, you're going to go to the street called Street. Right? Like, I've had people come to me after they've received a word like that in our environment, and they're broken, and they're confused. They're like, man, somebody, so-and-so came up, and they, and they, they prophesied this word over me, this thus saith the Lord word, you know, and they were like, and I, like it, doesn't, it doesn't sit right in my spirit, but I don't know what to do with it, and I'm confused, and now I'm doubting everything. And I don't. The reason that they're confused, that they're doubting, and they're perplexed about it is because in their spirit, they know that it was off, but because it was presented, it as 100% infallible. Now they're confused, like, I don't know, maybe it was God, and I'm totally a, I'm a mess. Like, I can't hear God at all myself. How many of you, like, that all, that's demonic. Yeah. That's an open door for the enemy to come in and buff it and beat people up and to convince you of, of a way that is different from what the way the Lord would have you go, right? So again, we promote in this environment, you know, a bit of a soft approach. It looks something like this. Hey, I felt like I heard the Lord say, you know, does that resonate with you? Does that mean anything to you? No, bro. I, you, I don't even know. That's crazy stuff. Oh, all right. See, now I just apologize and I keep swinging. Like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm just practicing. And, you know, I don't know, maybe throw that on the shelf. Maybe the Lord will speak something and give you some clarity down the road. And then I get to go back to the Lord in, in the place of prayer and try to figure out, well, man, was I hearing you? Because it felt like it came the same way that everything else does. And those things were right, but this was wrong. Like, help me, Holy Spirit. 
right? But I'm, but I'm presenting it like this, like, hey, I feel like, I, I think maybe that, right? You understand? Because I'm introducing to the person the possibility that I could get this wrong. Now, how many of you know, if you didn't get it wrong, it's going to work out just fine. You don't have to stamp it with 100%. This is infallible. Thus saith the Lord, you will obey this word or else. Like heaven is coming after you. What? Is this making sense? So we are practicing. We're, if, you, if our practice sharpens our senses to discern good and evil, that means we're both discerning what is happening in the demonic realm, but we're actually discerning what God's doing in any, env- in any environment as well. And then part of that practice is to discern what he's saying to us. To di- like, I feel like I heard God say this to you. Like, does this, does this resonate to you? Does it resonate with you? Does this, does this make any sense to you? And you know, sometimes it doesn't make any sense to the one who received it. Like one time, Misty and I talk about this often. Uh, I was at Bethel House of Prayer in, in Platte City, and there was a, a military guy that was there. I can't remember uh, where he was at. I think he might have been like a retired colonel or something. You know, and, uh, and I, I said, man, I don't know. I said, I, I hesitate to share this word with you. I was like, but I just, I just see a picture of, of flying purple elephants. I'm like, I know. All right. I'm like ready to take my lashes. And he and the pastor started laughing. <laughs> I'm like, all right. What's the, what's the, I know. I know it was stupid. I should have probably just kept my mouth shut. And they were like, no, you don't understand. That's a deeply personal word that I've been, I've been walking with the Lord for, for years, and he continues to speak this specific word, and he's now using you to speak it again. I'm like, man, all I have was purple elven, right? I'm like, I don't know. What would have been the worst case scenario? If, if, there's two things here. What's the worst case scenario of me stepping out and saying, I, I don't know if this, I, I just had this kind of, this is what I'm seeing. I don't know I'm take what it is. Maybe it's, be, right? I'm presenting it softly because one, I know it's stupid. And two, like it very likely is wrong. You know, what, what's the worst thing that can happen when I present that? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. I, she said, you look like an idiot. I don't, I don't think you, I don't, that's what we feel. That's what we feel. I don't think we do though. I, I think the person just goes, yeah, I don't know what that is. That doesn't resonate with me. Okay. Okay. Lord, what was that? Too many pepperonis. Oh, I don't remember that one, right? You know, let's flip it though. Let's just say for a second that I don't deliver that word. I'm like, man, I just kind of feel like I'm seeing this picture. I feel in my spirit like maybe this is something from God. I'm seeing this thing with flying purple elephants. Ain't no way I'm going to say that to this guy. Now, how many of us have been there? Ain't no way I'm going to deliver this word. So you're willing in that moment to disobey the voice of God? Shut up, Eden. (laughs) (laughs) Called out from the pulpit. I like that one. Think about that. We just talked about how most of these ways that the Holy Spirit would manifest himself are ways that he talks to us, right? Right? The Holy Spirit is now communicating something. He intends you to do something with that. Obviously, in this case, it's, you're supposed to have a conversation with this person who you're praying for, right? What happens when I don't do that because I'm scared or I think I'm going to look like an idiot or whatever my excuses are? I'm being disobedient to the Holy Spirit. Guys, I would rather take a swing and miss than be disobedient to God. You know, and, and, and I, wanna, I, I like to take this a step further because I feel like we diminish this so much in our culture right now. To disobey God's voice is sin. Let's call it what it is, guys. To disobey God's voice is sin. I don't want to. Jesus already took care of the sinner in me. I don't want to go back to that. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to put something on you, but like in a godly way, like, like I don't want to. I don't want to dishonor my father. I'm not trying to put like performance on you. I'm just saying like, like I love my, I love my father and I want to please him. I want to disobey him. I don't want to be rebellious in some way. I would rather take a swing and a miss and maybe look like an idiot. I don't think that's what's happening at that moment. But even if, I would rather look like an idiot and be obedient if nothing else than to miss the mark entirely because I was too scared to do so. And guys, listen, like if we have to practice, how many of you know you're going to take a swing and a miss? You know, you, you are you're going to fall flat on your face once in a while. 
You know, and that's okay. But if you never step out and you're never, never obedient to what the Holy Spirit's stirring in your heart, you will never get the practice that you need. And, and I would submit to you, if, if you're never going to do anything with what he's dishing out, that being God, you're probably going to go to somebody else. And I don't want that either. I don't want to be a disobedient, rebellious son. And I don't want him using somebody else because I refuse to be used. Man, the moment I got saved, I said, Lord, use me above all else. Like, just I, just, I submit my life to you that I would be of some use to you. That's still, a, that's still my heartbeat. And how many of you know, in these moments, if we don't know that there's practice involved, if we feel like it has to come gift wrapped from heaven and perfect, you know, if we feel like we have no responsibility, we're, we're missing the mark and we're stepping into disobedience and we are not going to fulfill our purpose. We're not going to be able to walk with him in the way that he's prescribed. Does this make sense? All right, let's recap quickly. God is still speaking. And it's not just through the Bible. Not exclusively. Yes, he is speaking through the Bible. Thank you, Jesus, that we have the Bible to go back to as a reference. You know, I'm so grateful for the plumb line of the word. It's just not the only way we encounter him. It's not the exclusive way that I get information from heaven. Obviously, these gifts are all part and parcel with that. One of the gifts we've talked about today, the gift of the word of knowledge, is a supernatural deposit from heaven of information that I could not have received any other way. It's not a gift of a good brain. Hey, good news. You don't have to be smart. You don't have to have a high IQ. Holy Spirit will still use you because he's got all that going on. (laughs) Where did you come up with that? All right, I'm going to rabbit trail just for a second because, you know, I've got the microphone. And I can do whatever I want. Man, I remember there was, a, there was a lady who knew nothing. This is going to be quick. She knew nothing about like physics and science and all this kind of stuff. You know, she had a download of a word of knowledge and, and she, she writes down this formula. She has no idea what it is, but she happened to know somebody. And so she had coffee with them and she was like, do you know what this means? And it ended up being like a breakthrough revelation for some industry, like some product that some, like the scientists have been working on, couldn't figure it out. And whole Holy Spirit gave this grandma the download of, like, she didn't have any knowledge of that. Like, you could be the dumbest person on the planet, but when Holy Spirit shows up, you're like a scientist, engineer. I'll take that. I'll take Holy Spirit over my own intellect. This is not your own intellect. This is knowledge that you can't come by any other way. And lastly, I'll just say this. We're called to earnestly desire the gifts. <laughs> And this is one of them. So why don't you posture yourself to receive. Let's pray for that. Holy Spirit, we've already prayed this morning. We're praying again. We have earnest desire in our hearts this morning to receive this gift. Man, we want to be like Kevin Nolker. We want to be like Ananias. We want to be like Peter and Paul, and these guys who operated at a high level of this gift. For, not for our glory, not because it's cool, not because it's like, wow, look at me, I'm so awesome, but for people's sake, for your name's sake, God. To, like you had awakened love in us that we would that we would be able to operate in the way that you've designed that people would be blessed that people would know that you see them that people would be honored that they would be touched by you we want to be used by God we submit ourselves to you to that end and we ask for an impartation from your holy spirit this morning an increase of the word of knowledge this gift in our lives we're asking for it this morning in Jesus mighty name amen